Okay, so today was the first day of Alibaba's AppSara conference. So this is like their Google I.O. conference, AWS build, etc. This is where they basically show off what they've been working on. And leading up to this, we've seen Quen announce an avalanche of models. So they've really announced a whole bunch of different models, model updates, some open, some not open. In this video, I'm going to go through each of them from the Quen team. I'm just focusing on the Quen team in here. We've also had Alibaba announce a whole bunch of generative video models as well, the one models. But I want to focus on what the Quen or the Chu Wen team have been working on that they went through and announced at the keynote of this conference. So they kicked things off pretty early by talking about the path to artificial superintelligence. And it seems like every frontier lab has to talk about something like this nowadays. But they actually had a bunch of stages that they talked through. And they talked about the sort of intelligence immersion of things coming out, of the whole idea of the second stage being assisting humans, and then going into self-learning and surpassing humans. Now, they didn't give a lot of details about how they're actually going to get there, but it was interesting to see them talk about this. At the same time, just like every other big tech company, announcing a big increase in investment to achieve artificial superintelligence. But really the interesting bit was the models that they went through. So let's jump in and have a look at the models that they announced. Okay, so I'm going to go quite quickly through all the models that they've announced for this conference, which actually is leading up to this conference as well over the past couple of days. So the first one is really their big proprietary model, and this is Quen3 Max. Here's their grand model. They actually said on stage that it was over a trillion parameters. Unfortunately, it looks like this one won't be open sourced. Based on the benchmarks that they're showing here, you can see that we're definitely getting a model which is very competitive against a lot of the proprietary models that are out there. And currently they've only released a non-thinking version. So they talk about that they've got a base version, which is over a trillion parameters, trained on 36 trillion tokens. They have an instruct fine-tuned version, which seems to be doing pretty well on the text arena. It's bidding out one of the GPT-5 models, but still a bit behind Claude Opus 4.1 and GPT-5 High, and quite a bit behind Gemini 2.5 Pro here. And then they have a thinking version, which is currently still training as they're going. They haven't actually released access to that yet. And you can see here that they're basically comparing that to a bunch of the proprietary models out there. Really, though, on benchmarks that are pretty much saturated, if everyone's getting 100%, it's not really a great benchmark anymore. So overall, this one will be interesting to see how the thinking version turns out. And do they make a coding version of this base model, which is quite large, to take on the Claude models? Next up, we've got the Quen3 VL. So this is their vision language model. And this definitely seems to be a big improvement on what they had before. So this is using one of their mixture of experts models, the 235 billion with 22 billion active parameters in here. You've got to wonder though, and just looking at those parameters, if you saw the video that I made about Quen next, you've got to wonder if that architecture plus the vision parts here is actually going to beat this model. So interestingly, the way that they are pitching this is not just the typical sort of thing that it's good at OCR, et cetera. They talk about this supporting 32 languages for OCR, that's up from 10 from their previous one. But also they've got a large context window, currently at 256, but expandable to 1 million tokens, which allows you to analyze text and images, or even up to two hours of video. Also, interestingly, it's very competitive with a lot of the spatial understanding stuff that up until now, the Gemini models have dominated that area. And sure enough, if we look at the benchmarks, we can see that they're gradually gaining on Gemini 2.5 Pro, surpassing it for a number of these really interesting benchmarks where you're looking at this sort of 2D, 3D grounding stuff and even some of the video benchmarks. The other thing that's really interesting is that they're promoting this and pretty much all the models that they're releasing currently as built for agents. It does seem that they're looking at using this kind of model for web browsing agents and any kind of agent where you want it to basically interact with a visual screen, etc. They have a demo in here of using it with Android. And they also had some nice demos of showing 
you taking a drawing and converting that to code. Now, a lot of the coding models have learned to do that over time, but so far from all my experiments, they're still quite a way behind. And the really cool thing with the Quen 3 VL is this one is open weights. So we can actually download the weights. We can test out the model, though it's a pretty huge model and most people are just not going to be able to run it without some serious hardware behind it. All right, next up, they've got their live translate flash model, real time multi-model interpretation. It seems to me this is making use of a lot of the things that they've learned through building the Omni model, which I'll talk about next, to be able to build something that can understand and translate in real time. As we're seeing all this new AI hardware being introduced with glasses and stuff like that, one of the big selling factors seems to be real time translation. So you can have a conversation with someone. Honestly, I've yet to see an implementation that works really well as you're holding it or wearing it. But clearly this is the way things are going to go. And these kind of models are going to be used for a lot of different things. It is interesting that this not only takes in audio, but it's also taking in vision, which they're using for doing things like reading lips, gestures, on-screen text and stuff like that, which I find fascinating. I think there's probably lots of other uses of this kind of tech. The sad thing is this is unfortunately not one of the open models that they actually released. All right, the other big model that they released is the Quen 3 Omni. So I did a video a long time back about the first version of Quen Omni that they released. This definitely seems to be a nice update here. In many ways, it seems to be using the same concepts as their first version, but just updated for the Quen 3 mixture of experts models. It can do multilingual in and out. And for me, probably the most interesting thing about that they've updated is the whole area around tool calling. So that this model now can actually do tool calling like we've seen from the OpenAI real-time API and also from the Gemini Live API or the Baidai API and AI Studio. And not surprisingly here, we can see that this can also do things like the audio captioning and some of the other tasks that we saw the translation model do as well. So this one is out with open weights and the size of it being a 30 billion with only 3 billion active actually makes me think that we'll probably see things like the MLX version of this so that you could actually run it on your Mac. I'll look into that and actually look at how you could actually make a version where you're running this locally. Okay, getting on to one of the other actual open leases that they've got here. This is Quen3 Guard and there's all these proprietary model providers are starting to realize that they need to be able to sort of censor or control what tokens go out. They're making these models, which obviously they also realize are useful to other people who are putting stuff into production. So the cool thing here is that you've got a very similar kind of model to what we've seen come out of the Gemma Shield Guard and some of the other open weights that have been provided in the past, like Llama. I guess the cool thing here is that these are probably a lot more tuned to the Quen 3 models. Therefore, you would expect them to work better with those going through. This is part of the open release. They've released a small one at 600 million, then a 4B and an 8B. And it's got multilingual support for 119 different languages and dialects in here. But they're claiming it's state-of-the-art for both English and Chinese. All right, so apart from the big models that they announced, we also saw a number of updates to models that they've had out. The first one, and probably maybe the most interesting one, is the Quen Image Update. This is obviously their answer to Nano Banana. And the first version was good and interesting, but certainly wasn't as good as Nano Banana. They've now put out an update with this, with a bunch of new ways that you can condition on images. So if we look here, it's basically conditioning on pose estimation and a piece of clothing to actually create an image. The fact that this is open certainly makes it really interesting. Although so far I haven't seen them update the actual weights on Hugging Face for this. So this allows for a whole bunch of things like multi-image editing, character consistency, product consistency through images. And you can imagine that if you are looking at to build some kind of product that's going to basically do images for people, this could certainly become a really useful model compared to paying for something like Nano Banana, which depending on which region you're in may be censored, etc. We've got a bunch of interesting examples in here of product placement, avatar creator. And of course, nowadays you can turn pretty much anything into a meme or a cartoon. 
There's also some really nice examples here of image restoration for things like colorization and actually fixing up old images, etc. Okay, some other recent releases that they had, which they featured, and I would definitely count as part of the Quen Avalanche, are things like their TTS system. So they've got a whole new TTS system. They've got a whole new ASR system. The biggest disappointment for me and why I haven't covered these in their own videos has been just because they're not open. They're API only. And while I think it's fair for them to actually make an API version, I'm not a fan of the Alibaba cloud and actually using their models on their API. I found it to have a number of issues. Lastly, another update that they talked about was an upgraded version of Quen3 Coda, which they're calling Quen3 Coda Plus. Unfortunately, again, this is just available on Alibaba Cloud Model Studio. So a lot of these models, they're clearly pushing now to go the proprietary path. And so far, they haven't been making all of them as open as they have in the past, which is a shame because they've been so strong with their open weights language models. So the other two interesting things that they announced, one was at the conference, one was from a few days ago, is this whole sort of mix of building an agent where it looks like they've fine-tuned the model to go along with the agent. So the one that they talked about at the conference was this personal AI travel designer. And having a play with this, it won't just automatically give you an answer back. It will then go into a conversation with you to sort of plan things out and act much more in a sort of agentic way. And I think this is going to be really interesting in that, do we get really sort of heavily fine-tuned models for very specific kinds of use cases? Or do we get like the GPT-5s, the Gemini 2.5 Pros, where people just use that for agent stuff? The second example of this came out last week from them, and it was actually very weirdly not called Quen. So this seems to be, again, a deep research team at Alibaba, but they basically have a really nice example of building this sort of deep research agent. We know, for example, when deep research first came out at OpenAI, it was using a modified version of O3. It wasn't just sort of the off-the-shelf version. It had been trained specifically for that. And if we actually look here, this is exactly what they've done with this model. They've done extra pre-training for what they're calling agentic continual pre-training. They then do some supervised fine-tuning, not surprising there. But then they go into the whole sort of RL loop of where they're guiding it for this specific task, in this case of doing deep research. Now, interestingly, they talk about that they're using a sort of vanilla React framework for actually getting the information out of this. You could imagine going forward that these kinds of things are going to be trained to specifically match a particular agent framework. And I think this is where perhaps the model providers are going to have an advantage over a lot of the agent frameworks that are out there in that they'll be able to make the models respond much better to their particular agent framework that's out there. So this is really interesting to sort of look at, probably deserves a whole video by itself. As we can see that they've got two ways of doing this. They've got the native React mode, and then they've got this sort of heavy mode in here. So it's definitely interesting for them to release this and to see how they're actually making something that actually beats the OpenAI deep research on a number of different benchmarks, including on things like humanity's last exam. So overall, a really big drop of models and updates from the Alibaba Quen team. Unfortunately, not all of them are open. I would love to see them actually release one of the TTS systems, even if it's not the latest one, release the older one so that we could actually play with that. Same for the ASR. And hopefully we'll see the Quen Coda Plus get a release, or do they actually want to serve that as a competitor to Claude Code, etc. So after a few weeks with a lot of releases coming out of China, the new versions of Grok coming out, the ball is really back in the quarter of Google and perhaps OpenAI and Anthropic to look at doing some of the releases. Now we've seen Anthropic do Opus 4.1. I gotta wonder, is there a Sonnet 4.1 around the corner? And are we going to see any sort of omni models or anything like that from companies like Anthropic and perhaps even XAI make some of the things that they're doing in their own products available as APIs? Overall, very interesting series of announcements from Quen. Hopefully we see some more of these coming out as open weights models over the next few days. All right, let me know in the comments what you think. Have you tried any of these models out? If people have got questions, etc., I'd love to hear them in there. 
And as always, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.